Well, so if you were watching, Fed Chair Jay Powell, big press conference, he and the Federal Reserve are basically predicting recession next year. Isn't that wonderful? I don't think so. Let's ask Art Laffer, former Reagan advisor, Presidential Medal of Freedom recipient, and author of Taxes Have Consequences. Arthur, um, Fed, I mean, they're predicting a 1% increase in the unemployment rate, and they're predicting GDP for the whole year at 0.5%. So, you know, institutionally, that's as close as you come to saying we're going to have a recession. He also said we're going to keep on raising interest rates to get inflation down. So I want to get your take. I mean, especially, Arthur, do we really need a recession? I mean, how about stopping this stupid omnibus spending bill and adding some tax incentives instead of having a Fed recession? Anyway, what do you think, my friend? Well, I don't know why he's forecasting that, Larry. You'd think if you had that as your forecast, you would do something to make it not happen. Mm. You'd oh. think they'd do some policies that would make the growth higher, you know, but that's not what they're doing. They like that outcome, which is really surprising to me. Uh, but it's not the way to take care of inflation. Now, when you look at the next seven months worth of numbers, six, seven months worth of numbers, because the long ago months numbers, 12 months ago, 10 months ago, 11, 12, all those back there were very large numbers. You're going to see, I would guess, that the inflation number is going to be coming down quite substantially over the next six or seven months uh, because of the last numbers being so high. But once that's over, then you've got sitting there here now, if that number is above 3%, they've got a real long-term problem on inflation and that they've not handled it. So uh, when I look at the Fed, I just wish they'd allow for some economic growth through fiscal policy and would s just let interest rates go to where they should be and then be done with it. Just follow the interest rates in the marketplace. I mean, on the fiscal side, so of course you're right, and I am a follower of the Laffer curve and the Laffer analysis. You, they're not getting any help. You know, you've got these guys, the lame ducks are Spending. They're talking about it. It really is 1.9 trillion, but there's going to be a plus up of at least 100 billion, and it may be 200 billion. And Arthur, there's no. Um, they're not going to extend the Trump tax cut, and they're not even going to try to. They're not even going to. You know, the depreciation bonus starts to run out. They're not going to fix that. The R and D tax credit uh, depreciation runs out. They're not going to add any growthier policies that might actually help the Fed. Yeah. Well, the thing that amazes me, Larry, is given all their controls and all the ability they had to change things at their will, they didn't touch the t Trump tax bill. They really didn't. They put in a few little thises and thats and the others, but they did not touch the core part of the President Trump's tax bill, which is amazing to me. And it, I think they know it really works. And what they're doing now is, uh, is just trying to get as much as they possibly can before the Republicans take over the House. And then I just hope to goodness you're right that the Republicans actually will block these bills. I don't know that they will, by the way, but I just hope they do block them and not and bring that spending way, way down. You do you know, think they will? Well, look at I was talking to Rand Paul, OK, who's a good guy. And uh, all you yes, need, a great guy. all you need is 41 Republican senators right now, this week, and they should vote, not only, not simply voting against the omnibus spending bill, but they could vote to implement the pay-go caps. That's still the law. This is Steve Moore's point. Yep. And it would save at least $130 yes, billion dollars and would symbolically make a... You just need 41 Republicans because it takes 60 to waive and I, the way of the caps. And I don't know why the GOP won't do this. It would, be a good, it would be a good start and then let the House take over on January 3rd and run some growthier policies. Kevin McCarthy was on yesterday. He sounded great. He's pro-growth. He's pro-laffer. He's pro-supply side and free market. But in the meantime, 41 senators could stop this nonsense. Yeah, now, PAYGO b bothers me a little bit, Larry, because as often as not historically, they use PAYGO by raising tax rates oh, and wow. by raising taxes in the process rather than cutting other spending. But yes, if they could assure that it would be spending cuts that would be happening, I would love it if they'd follow PAYGO, and that would be just great. But do you think they're going to? I mean, I, I don't see the strength in these Republicans yet. I don't see the resolve. I don't see the pro-growth agenda by Republicans. I look at the past bills that the Senate voted for, Republicans did, and I, and, I, and I don't like what I see. 
So when I look at this, I just hope the Republicans develop a backbone and really look at the economy as being the issue. I think uh, the House... Bringing down spending, making sure the tax bill stays. I, I think you'll like the House. You know, I, I think McCarthy and Scalise and all of them, I think you're going to like that, Art. The, right now, the problem is the Senate. I hope so. The Senate is the problem. Senate Republicans, in, including the leadership, I don't want to make anything personal. You know that. But I'm just saying the leadership goes along but, with this omnibus spending bill and Arthur with earmarks, you know, the whole nine yards. No growth. The whole bit. Nothing on the supply side. That's the problem I'm having here. I would stand up on their hind legs and say we want to grow. You know, if you had supply side policies, this is yeah. what you taught me. Then the Fed doesn't have to come crashing in and destroying the money supply and the dollar and all the rest of it. They don't have to do that. You'd have, you know, more goods. The Fed has absorbed the excess money, I think. You'd have more goods and no excess money, and you'd have a healthy economy again. Yeah. When you look at candidates running for president in 224, uh, you know, I think the candidate that's really going to take the show and win the game is the one that promises a very upbeat, positive, pro-growth agenda. You know, what we talk about is the stewards of the economy, yes. guardians of prosperity. Yes. That is the message. That message should be done through the House and through the Senate. And that means cutting spending, spending restraint. It means tax cuts, putting in the permanency of the Trump tax bill, making it permanent. It talks also about uh, not only tax cuts, it also talks about sound money. Now, sound money is not what the Fed is proposing. Like deregulation, that's another thing that could really be good. And then free trade, Larry. Free trade is the huge secret sauce in all of this. It was regular, it was restrictions, it was tariffs, it was quotas that brought us into the Great Depression in 1929 with the Smoot-Hawley tariff. That was what brought us in. It was one of the biggest things, as you wrote about, about Kennedy, was the idea that those that the Kennedy round tariff right, negotiation really helped foster and grow. I love you. Sorry. No, no. But that's what we need. You're, exa growth. you're exactly right. Look, Arthur, we have to write a paper or something on op-ed pieces. Let's just get it out there. Let's okay? do it. I'll do it. I got to jump out, but uh, you're a thousand percent right. Art Laffer, everybody, the best, the best.